Hello and welcome to another video on Quick Quote, our countertop estimating and drawing software. In this video we're going to take a closer look at creating complex and detailed drawings. If you don't already own a copy of Quick Quote, head on over to our website www.crystallineonline.com where you can download a free 30-day trial. Since we're focusing on drawing and not quoting this time, we went ahead and did our product selections to get that out of the way. We've also created this funky looking countertop as an example template. It showcases the many different options you have for customizing your drawings in Quick Quote, and we're going to walk through them by recreating it in this video. As you can see, it doesn't quite match any of the shapes shown here. That's because in Quick Quote, you start with one of these general shapes and add detail to it in order to get something like the goofy one we created. Since it looks more or less like a U shape, go ahead and select the U. That'll bring up the shape window, which is where most of the work happens in Quick Quote. If you need to change the orientation of the shape, you can do that with the buttons up top here. Ours is already in the standard orientation, so we'll leave it that way. Once you've got the shape rotated to where you want it to be, go ahead and enter the dimensions of each side of the countertop into the corresponding boxes. You want these to measure all the way to the full extent of the shape, including any kind of bump outs. And you can use either decimals or fractions. You can control what units you're working with in the Edit Company Information utility, but our demo defaults to inches. Next we want to set our sides to be the right types. Our left side in this example is set to be a plain wall, and our right side in the front of the two legs should be finished edges. If you need a label that's not already in the list, like stove or fridge, you'll need to add it to the available side options in the Customize Products utility. Now let's do the corners. Starting on the left side, we have a big diagonal. You can add that by selecting the miter corner option from the drop-down on that corner, and entering the length of the miter you want. To the right of that, we've got what some call a double miter corner. In Quick Quote, it's a base and cut corner, or BEC for short. It requires two dimensions. One indicates how far from the corner the cut starts, which is also the distance to this 45 degree line, and the length of the 45 degree line controls how pointy the corner will be afterwards. Above that, we've got a recessed diagonal corner. This one just wants a length and depth. Finally, to the right, there's a big radius corner, and it just needs the radius. To make sure it prices properly, we're going to select the other item code we set up for big radiuses instead of the eased one. Now you may have noticed we skipped the notch corner in the upper left. That's because that was created with a banjo cut rather than a corner selection. The banjo cut comes from this toolbar on the left side of the window, which contains a number of options to further customize the shape like cutouts and joint lines. Like all these options, the banjo cut tool starts by asking which side of the shape we'd like to modify. Once you pick the side, you can choose which corner gets cut with the checkboxes. Next, you want to enter the difference in size between the two ends. We're making this a 4x4 four four notch, so one side will be 4 inches shorter than the other. To make it square, we just have to make sure the two dimensions here add up to be the same length as the side, which is listed in the box to the right. Once it's created, you'll see an icon for it appear under the toolbar, and you can click that to modify it or remove it. We have another little notch in the back, and you can create that one with the recess tool. Like the banjo cut, the first step is to pick the line to modify. Next, you'll need to enter the length and depth of the cut, as well as the distance to the center from one or both sides. If you want to round or clip the corners, you can use the drop downs to do that. In the middle of the shape, we have three things, a seam, a bump out, and a cutout. First, we'll do the cutout. For the cutout, you're picking the side it faces. Like the recess and sink tools, it needs the distance to the center line. For a front edge like this, you want to measure all the way to the back wall, or you can just hit the Get Side Center button to center it up automatically. Normally, you'd enter the size of the cutout too, but we're going to set this one to default to a standard size sink cutout. Lastly, you just have to add the distance from the line we selected to the front of the cutout. Next, we'll add the bump out. It's pretty much identical to the recess, only inverted. Since it sticks out, we'll round off the corners so nobody gets hurt. As you may have noticed, most of these changes are reflected on the shape here, but remember this window is not to scale, so if something funny like this overlap between the bump out and the recessed corner happens, it's okay, 
it'll be drawn properly when the time comes. Lastly, we'll put our joint line in. Pick the line you want to break, and then enter the distance to the joint. The checkboxes on the right control what label gets assigned to it when it draws. The final thing we have on this shape is an arc bump out, which works a lot like the regular one. Click your line, and enter your dimensions. To fill up the whole side, just hit Use Side Length, and it will add the dimensions for you. Then all you need is how far you want the arc to stick out. Now that all the modifications have been added, let's go ahead and let Quick Quote draw and price our shape by hitting the OK button. It looks pretty close to the template, but not quite the same. That's because we did some more customization to the original using Quick Quote's built-in CAD tools to clean up some of the labels a bit, and add some more information that the automated drawing process didn't provide. The CAD tools are available from this drop-down in the upper right of the drawing area. The first one we want is our zoom tool, just to focus in on our new shape. Then next, we're going to need the Explode tool. The Explode tool allows you to break the shape into its component parts so they can be modified or deleted. First click the side of the shape to highlight it, and then click Explode to break it. Now you can click on the individual pieces. To match our template, we're going to move and delete some of the text so it isn't overlapping. Moving just means highlighting the object and dragging the blue dot in the center. To delete, just highlight the object and hit your delete key. Another thing you might want to do is add some of the individual line dimensions. For that you can click on the line and hit the measure line tool to add the text. There's a regular add text tool you can use for your own notes too. There are also tools for drawing ellipses, circles, rectangles, lines, polylines, and arcs, as well as for doing things like rotating and copying objects. These tools do not affect pricing though, so if you want to add material, you'll need to do that with another shape. Finally, we want to put this all back into one shape, and for that we need the Select and Block tools. First click the Area Selector, and then use it to draw a box around the shape so everything in it is highlighted. Then hit the block tool to turn it back into a solid shape you can move around as one piece. So that covers many of the tools available to create detailed shapes in Quick Quote. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.